I remember one of the first end time sermons that I ever preached was when the Twin Towers、uh, fell. And right away, God showed me in Luke chapter 13 that Jesus also preached about the news of the time because there was a tower that fell and killed something like 18 people. I mean, that's exactly the news. The difference is back then they get the news once in a while and it doesn't travel fast and far. But today we are inundated, we are bombarded with news. Now, what's amazing to me is we in the church, the body of Christ, we have all sorts of seminars where we gather together to figure out how to、um, transform culture. We have culture transformation, we have kingdom invasion, we have revival, spirit revival meetings, we have how to, you know,、uh, Uh, win the neighborhood to the Lord. We have all these things, and yet when you say, Well, what do you say about WikiLeaks? What do you say about Donald Trump's presidency? What do you say about end times? A lot of leaders have said, Oh, no, no, we don't need to talk about that. that that's amazing to me. I mean, if we don't talk about what is relevant, what everybody is talking about, How can you even have a seminar about invading the culture or being relevant to the culture? The culture's already gone on. The culture's moved ahead of the church. And here we are saying old, hackneyed cliches. I can't stand religious cliches. I turn off sermons with religious cliches. You know, some, some idioms are interesting, okay, but if that's all there is, I mean, the cultures move on. How do we stay relevant? You've got to do what Jesus did. And you got to do what the early disciples did. And you got to do what the, the great preachers, revivalists of the old days did, which is you've got to speak about what is on everyone's mind. Now, if you don't realize, WikiLeaks has dumped you know, the, the greatest, the biggest batch of secret documents ever in one day. And it's not even finished yet. You know, just a, a minuscule percentage has been released. And there's so much already that's. Uh, been found out about that. So if you don't know that and you're not hearing that in the church, the church to me, excuse me if, if other people, I'm not really judging anybody else, but I'm saying this is what we should be doing. In fact, I got proof for you. Back in the 1700s, we're talking about over 200 years ago, I can get you sermons. When there was an earthquake, Dr. Mayhew's discourse on Revelation chapter 15. Occasioned by earthquakes in November 1755. And people think for me to preach earthquakes is new. Guess what? When there's an eclipse, sermon containing reflections on the solar eclipse which appeared in June 16, 18, man, this is so hard to read. I think that's 1806. When I started preaching about the blood moons, people freaked out and thought, oh, you're into astrology. Hey, It's been around since Bible time. God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. We don't worship those things. That's astrology. We believe God made them, and whatever is happening in, the t- in that time, that's what you've got to bring the Bible to and bring a biblical perspective for the believer.、Amen. And so, if there's an earthquake, the sermon next week would be occasioned by the earthquake, and the preacher who's responsible for Informing, educating the church would have to take the church through all the scriptures about earthquakes. Every time an earthquake appears in the Bible, we're going to go through it and see what does God say about earthquakes? Wouldn't that be interesting? Now, how many churches do that? Then, if there's an eclipse, that was often the talk of the town, even to today, you know? The, the weatherman would definitely announce a full solar eclipse. It's an event that people want to see. And, and they, they time it, they wait for it. What does the Bible say about solar eclipses? So people preach that. And then if there's a war, if there's conscription, all right, preachers used to be invited by the government to speak to the generals and the soldiers about their moral duty in the military. What does the Bible say about the military? When there was a great crime and the whole society was shaken and somebody was caught, they talked about the sermon that week was, What does the Bible say about that crime? What should be done to that criminal? People didn't just make it up out of their own head. It's not based on feelings, it was based on the standard of the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So we always want to bring a perspective on、uh, 
the biblical perspective on whatever is happening. Now, when you talk about WikiLeaks and all that, I mean, obviously the Bible doesn't have, uh, you know, stuff about the Internet. Today, I cannot take you through all the scriptures about the Internet. I can't do that, right? But we've got to try. If we're responsible and if we're relevant, we've got to try to bring the Bible to bear with what everyone is thinking about. That's, to me, kingdom invasion. That's cultural transformation. And that's being relevant. So, unless you have no smartphone and no computer, I think you know that WikiLeaks has uh, released what they call Vault 7. On Tuesday, 7th of March, 2017, WikiLeaks began releasing the biggest leak of secret CIA documents of all time. And that's Julian Assange, one of our own, an Aussie. I don't know why Aussies are being used so much in the end times. The MSM, the mainstream media, which I have renamed the Marxist media. That's what I call them. That's what they are. They're cultural Marxists. Communism's been defeated. Communism's failed, but they come back with it. Repackaged, renamed, rehashed, and then they try to control you. Anything that's using power to force you and control you because they think they know better, is a form of communism. We believe in freedom. We believe in as small government as possible. Less government intrusion, the better. The more laws, the less freedom. That's what we believe. So look at what the Marxist media refuse to cover. The news outlets which refuse to cover WikiLeaks Vault 7. The Washington Post thus far said nothing. Huffington Post said nothing. New York Times said nothing. Wall Street Journal said nothing. CNN, the corrupt news network. We can now call them the communist news network. Not reporting the news, making up the news. Mind control, propaganda. That's what they're doing, and that's what the Bible says. You want me to give you a scripture? Jesus says, in the last day, there will be such deception that it will deceive even the elect, if possible. Matthew 24, 24. All right, so that's what we're seeing. We see uh, outlets of pure deception, outlets of an anti-God, anti-Christian, anti-church philosophy. And people are consuming this in mass. On Twitter, Stefan Molyneux said, it's pretty curious that many media outlets are simply ignoring the WikiLeaks Vault 7 release. Anybody not covering the story is fake news. I couldn't have said it better myself. Ben Garrison was very quick to draw this. I'm amazed how quickly he draws these things. But that's what Vault 7 is implying, that Barack Obama's administration has done something clandestine that is possibly criminal, something really bad. So Trump said when he's elected, he's going to drain the swamp. I put on my Instagram this photo of the CIA, and I said, WikiLeaks Vault 7 proved what I said for years. And you've been listening to me for years, so you know I said it. I didn't need WikiLeaks to tell me. I have God's word on this. But it proved what I've said for years. TV is capable of watching you. This is part of what I believe will become the image of the beast, the Antichrist control. How will they control people so much? They need information. They need to create profiles of you. And right now, they're getting most people's voluntary cooperation. You put up your profiles publicly on Facebook and many places, and I do as well, but I'm pretty guarded about what I want to share. I share things not to puff myself, make myself feel good, but I share things that I think will bless you, will help you. So if you uh, are not aware of my Instagram account, it's just my name, Steve Ciccolanti, Steve Ciccolanti. Don't go for the imposters. Don't give money to somebody that just says they're Discover Ministries or something, and uh, they're not, okay? We got so many imposters out there. That's part of the evil of social media. But uh, my real one is Steve Ciccolanti. So, you know, we got right now, uh, you know, 1,400 followers, and it will just uh, keep growing. All right, so... We welcome you to connect with us socially. Let's talk about some end-time revelations from Vault 7. Let me give you the facts. What has been revealed to us is that the CIA has malware which creates backdoors into your smartphones 
and your smart TVs. Your electronic devices are the CIA's microphones. Your PC computer is the CIA's spyware via Windows Update. They put the malware into the Windows Update. Skype chats are converted into text and stored on CIA cloud, and this is presumably to build a case against you, to build a dossier against you. And this is what the Nazis did. This is what the communists did. This is what they do is to gather information and, uh, you know, and find snitches who will try to hurt you. So I don't really get, you know, Christians who go around trying to act like that, trying to expose and hurt and destroy and critique and judge people. I just don't get that. You know, you don't need the anointing of God to do that. And if you keep doing it, you're going to be far, far from God. All right? And I believe this year is not the year to be uh, playing footloose with uh, the way that you talk, the way that you act. You have to walk in love. This is the year. This is Jubilee, and God's going to do something big. And before he does, he cleans house. And that's why you're seeing the swamp is being drained at every level of society. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, CIA can remote control cars and planes to carry out assassinations. That is possible. Matthew 24, 24, as I mentioned to you, Jesus predicted this, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. What does that mean? Uh, such a propaganda that even the Christians who are supposed to know better will end up being deceived? What could that possibly be? Revelation chapter 13 mentions this deception. I mean, most of end time signs refers to deception, right? There are physical signs, and that's part of it, but the first and the foremost sign that God gives again and again is this mass deception that goes throughout the earth and even infiltrates the Christian church. Revelation 13, verse 14, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth. This is two, there are two beasts in Revelation 13. They're both really antichrists, two of them. And one of them, he deceives the whole, uh, those who dwell on the earth, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beasts who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Wow, there's such an infiltration. There's going to be images that will talk to people, and it will capture people's hearts and minds, and it will direct you to do certain things. Well, you know, that's exactly what TV is. TV doesn't exist for your entertainment. TV doesn't exist for your information. TV exists to bring you to commercial products that they want you to purchase. The whole point of TV is to change your behavior. At the very least, your economic behavior, but they also want to change your political behavior and your spiritual uh, destiny. And they do that through images. We already have, you know, the scenario that Revelation 13 is describing. But again, so many pastors are either freaked out about end times or so married to their denominational bias that they just can't see Revelation's already ticking. It's already being fulfilled right now. Okay, so don't be fighting for your denomination's theology, right? Fight for souls. People are being deceived as we speak. And unless we tell them, wake up. Snap out of it. You're going to go to hell believing lies from the devil. It's not worth it. It's what, what sets you free? The truth. The truth sets you free. That's why there's so much power in declaring the truth in church, uh, by DVD, on the Internet, by blogs, any books and publications. As much as we can, we want to get the truth out until the knowledge of the Lord covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. So... God has already warned us. Uh, we covered this, you know, the prophetic visions and the scriptures that talk about the massive uh, deception that is going to happen during the tribulation. Right now, we're pretty deceived, the world is. Imagine when Christians are gone. Imagine if and when the rapture takes place. The deception will be so deep. And we're beginning to see through WikiLeaks some of the deception unfold in front of our eyes. McAfee on Vault 7 says, the CIA has failed 
in its mandate to protect the American people. Governments exist to protect the people, but now the people exist to serve the needs and the voracious spending appetite of the politicians. What else can we learn from Vault 7? The U.S. consulate in Frankfurt, Germany is a covert CIA base frequented by hackers and sometimes legitimate consular workers. Under a project named Umbridge, the CIA has maintained a library of Russian cyber attack techniques stolen by malware. The CIA can mimic Russian hackers by leaving Russian fingerprints on American dirty work. And guess what they've been saying the whole time? The Russians, the Russians, the Russians. And I said, baloney. Don't believe it. And Americans love this. Americans, whoever the government hates, the American preachers preach the same thing. Let me give you a warning right now for all those people who hate Russia, hate Putin. I'm not saying Putin is a clean guy, yeah? But I don't find in the scriptures this scenario that is painted by American preachers and people who follow them that Russia is going to be this great enemy and the Antichrist will come from Russia. And I don't even find precedent in history where Russia is going to attack Israel. I understand lots of respectable people say that, but I don't go by what they say currently. I go by history. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. I've taught this in my World War III series, in my Revelation series. I've taught this for nearly 20 years. I said, forget Russia. And you know what? Looks like Russia's the good guy right now. But, you know, Americans don't like Russia, right? So, therefore, they impose that cultural value on the way they read the Bible. And that's how you get distorted interpretations. The people who attack Israel are already surrounding Israel, and they've done it for, you know, more than a thousand years. In fact, it's been more than 4,000 years, right? They're all there, and they continue to be enemies of Israel, not quite the Russians. So people got theories about why the Russians will come, and, you know, it changes all the time. A fact we learn, the CIA uses techniques to make cyber attacks look like they originated from an enemy state. The CIA often accuses Russia and China of hacking. And now we know the deception is deep. How, how can we tell anymore? I mean, of course, all of the states are hacking each other. Nothing new about spying. Everyone's been spying on each other. But they are able to leave false fingerprints, right? This is like Hollywood movie. They're leaving false. This is what's called false flag. You create a false flag event. Right? You bomb somebody, you hurt somebody, and you put the wrong flag on the bomb. It's a false flag. It wasn't their flag that did it. How are people going to be able to tell? And if you're not informed in the Word of God, you're not following the Holy Spirit, there's almost zero chance of discerning what is true and what is fake. That means you're going to get sucked in. You're going to fall for a lie unless you depend on God's Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of truth. Number nine, Fact we learn, CIA has lost control of much of its cyber arsenal. So they have to create malware. Malware has to go out and infect, but once it gets out, it's out of their hand. It's out of control. So this is costing real money in the economy. All right? There's malware out there that's been released by our own governments. What are the implications of Vault 7? Number one, there are no secrets. You like to keep a secret, I guess don't put it in your computer. There are no secrets. And don't put it in your phone. There are no secrets. There was no secrets anyway before God. Is that right? There is redemption. God's not out to destroy you with your past, not out to expose and hurt you. Right? But he says everything that has been done in secret, in the last day it will be proclaimed on the rooftop. So how do you get it not to be proclaimed? You must repent and be washed by in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then he says, he cast your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. If other people want to bug you about it, they want to talk about the past, you say, that person's gone. That thing has been washed, covered by the blood of Jesus. That is the reality, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So don't hold grudges and don't talk about other people because that's their past. You don't know what their present is like. They might have already cleaned up with God, and you are still bitter and angry about something, 
that God Himself doesn't hold in record. Number two implication, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Samsung, Cisco, the entire Silicon Valley are all part of the CIA's covert apparatus. Number three, left-wing claims that Russia attacked or hacked the Democrat servers or helped Trump win the White House appear to be false. Trump's claims that Obama wiretapped Trump Tower during the elections and that there exists a hostile bureaucracy working against the president now appears to be credible. Now, if you listen to the Marxist media, what do they say? They always twist the story. It's just a selection of words. You could pick neutral words or you can pick biased words. And they always twist it. So now we know they're a contrarian indicator. Whatever they say, the opposite is true. So we're, we're kind of comfortable now with whatever they say. Here, source, March 8. Source, Obama. What source? Which source? If it was Trump, they say unsubstantiated source. Tell us what the source is. But when it's pro-Obama, they just say, eh, some source, whoever it is. Source, Obama rolled his eyes at unsubstantiated Trump wiretapping claims. Yeah, sounds like Obama's so cool and Trump's a buffoon. Yep, here's the New Jersey opinion. Trump defames Obama. Look at how crazy, how hysterical they get. The first step toward his impeachment? Question mark. Okay, so you're not reporting facts. You're just asking a question and a dumb question. Nobody's going to get impeached because of this. And in fact, it looks like Obama may very well get in big trouble and people in his administration. The Independent. Donald Trump's Obama wiretapping claims could get him impeached, says Harvard Law professor. That's how much his opinion's worth. I mean, they're just, they're not telling, they're not reporting the news, they're making up stuff. If proof false, allegations could be a case of serious misconduct, according to this legal expert. Yep, and you know what will happen. It will just be another fake news. Nothing will happen. Trump will not be impeached. In fact, because of the lunacy of the left, because of the hysteria and the obvious lies and the false outrage and the biased reporting of the left, I believe that Trump is pretty much insured of a second term. I believe he will be a two-term president just because the left is so unhinged. And we're fed up with it. The world is fed up with this. What other implications can we draw from WikiLeaks Vault 7? If you don't remember, you don't know this, if you didn't study it, Richard Nixon was president of the United States and he was impeached for wiretapping his opponents at a hotel called Watergate. So he tried to wiretap people he didn't like, and he was gone. Now, Obama spent $100 billion building a cyber arsenal against his own private citizens. Where does that leave him? I mean, it's Watergate, like, to the Googleplex power. We've not seen anything like this. This is a, a, a machine that can tap everybody, including the Republican presidential nominee. How unethical, how immoral is that? The term deep state is now in current use. The term deep state refers to a state a state within a state, a government within a government. It's called the shadow government. What does that mean? That refers to a bunch of unelected, unaccountable, often entrenched political officials who control the real power. And it means that politics is mere theater for the gullible masses. The illusion of choice is given to people but whoever gets elected, they carry on with their spending. They carry on with printing money. They carry on with very hostile, very bellicose foreign policy, killing heads of state, starting foreign wars and not calling it war. Bob, Obama bombed, dropped 100,000 bombs 
and didn't officially get Congress approval to start any war. Do you think dropping 100,000 bombs on anybody would constitute war? But what deception? He got the Nobel Peace Prize. You see, if Jesus came, if a good guy came, you know what? Most people would hate him. But when a bad guy is around, Jesus says, they come in their own name, you accept them. Deep state is real, and much of its growth and spending occurred under President Barack Hussein Obama. So this is why this picture was so uh, smart, so uh, captures so much about what Vault 7 is telling us. This really is implying some very deep criminal activity, clandestine activity that's going on, sanctioned by a shadow government. I think the deeper implication that we need to get to, especially for those in America, is that much of the homage that is paid to the Constitution is not real. Much of the laws and much of the con uh, uh, court's decisions clearly violate the Constitution. There's no sanctity of life. There's often no freedom of religion. There's extreme overreach of judicial power, legislative power, sometimes executive power. It's happening all the time. So people pay lip service to this wonderful document called the Constitution. But most people don't know what it is, they don't know what it says, and they don't know that many judges are ruling against the original interpretation of the Constitution. And they, it's just words to them. A judge can make up any word, just change it. And say, well, this is the Constitution, but I say it's a living document. What does that mean? I can ignore it. I can just interpret it, reinterpret it, make it say what I want it to say. Right? You either believe in the original in, uh, intention of the Founding Fathers, or you believe you can trump their intention. You can make up your own interpretation. So, unfortunately, even though the Constitution is really one of the greatest documents that was ever written besides the Bible, I really believe that. America was very blessed with a uh, strong biblical model of government. And that's what we'd love to see in uh, Australia, in the Western world. We'd love to see that. Real biblical, going back to, you know, time-tested, proven models of ruling, uh, of governing. But um, even though it's very good, it's just become a, quote-unquote, living piece of paper that can be ignored. Deep state and the covert wiretapping of citizens are violations of the Fourth Amendment, which reads, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause. Okay, in simpler English, it means that you have the right to privacy, and you have the right to be protected from arbitrary intrusion by your own government. See, they didn't trust their, their government. That's why the, f the Founding Fathers wrote such an amazing uh, piece of document called the Constitution. They have seen government go bad again and again and again. They fled from the tyranny of the British Empire at that time and the taxation without representation and many other abuses of political power. So they understood that you need to give people a lot of layers of protection from their own government. But what does the Marxist media say? Look at FBI Director James Comey. He's got to go. This man is, doesn't belong there. He says, quote, there's no such thing as absolute privacy in America. Well, that's what, that's what they want you to accept. Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, these guys, John Adams, they were willing to shed their blood to not accept that statement. Where are these guys? Where are our George Washingtons today? Maybe Donald Trump, history will show, is a kind of leader like George Washington. You know, Abraham Lincoln was very unpopular in his time. When he got elected, the southern states actually seceded. They actually left the state. Can you imagine that? Trump is not even that unpopular compared to Abraham Lincoln. But today, the left claim Abraham Lincoln as one of their own. Not at all. The left was the enemy of Abraham Lincoln. So what's the prophetic significance of this? Number one, let me bring a Christian biblical perspective. This release of WikiLeaks is occurring. It's still going. It's still being released. 
is occurring over the Feast of Purim. This is also known as the Feast of Esther, which celebrates the reversal of the enemy's plan. Oh, hallelujah. Historically, it was Persia's plan to kill the Jews. And at the Feast of Esther, the Jews killed the Persians and anyone else who came against them. You see, this deep state, the shadow government has had a plan to deceive the planet and control the planet to put us under communist, globalist rule, and it's unraveling so quickly. They don't know what to do. One man got elected, and it's like a fire has started. A little fire is becoming a bonfire, and it's going to become a forest fire. While deep state and fake news, mainstream media are being exposed in America, Israel is making friends with Russia and the Arab allies in the region. And I taught you about how uh, President Donald Trump's meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu is actually extremely revealing about what is about to come in the Middle East. If you read into their words, if you read between the lines, they've already mapped out there's a change in geopolitics. They're not going to do it the same way that has been done by the Democrats and the Republicans and people think they're really having a choice, but it's just an illusion. But Trump is a real choice because he's an outsider. And he's not taking money, lobby money from anyone. He doesn't have to pay back with favors to anyone. He funded so much of his own campaign. He doesn't care what other people want. He's going to do what's right. It's called governing on principle. If you don't have principles, you will do whatever people bribe you to do. But they don't, they don't call it a bribe, right? It's a legal thing. It's a donation. It's a whatever lobbying, you know, a trip to who knows, Mexico or something. All these new developments are turning points in world history, and they are happening on the year of Jubilee. 2017 is the 50th anniversary of 1967. We are due for revival. The last major revival started in 1967. I believe we are now well qualified for revival days, that we don't have to be ashamed of Christianity, don't have to be ashamed of what the Bible says. We're going to speak it loud and speak it proud, in a humble way, and we're going to not be afraid to be Christian. It is a right to have freedom of expression, freedom of religion, freedom of conscience, freedom of speech. These are rights that no government gives, no government takes away. It's our right. And we're in the time where we're going to see revival. It's also 5777 on the Hebrew calendar. That's perfection, perfection, perfection. Something is going to be done in Israel. Something's going to happen in a major way in Israel. So I think we can claim the year of Jubilee. But I must give a slight warning. I believe that revival will be preceded by a cleansing. I said last year and even before last year that according to the Psalms 116, last year will be a year of death for the righteous. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. And many people all around the world told me or reported saints who died, godly people who died. Yeah, and, and God took them, okay? And now they're in a better place. They're in heaven. However, this year, I make a different prophetic statement. This year, the people who die, they will be the unrighteous. The unrighteous. The people who can play footloose with God's Word, who think they can call themselves Christian and go to church but really, they don't walk in love. They don't walk in forgiveness. They don't uh, uh, walk the way that Jesus walked. There is no heart of grace and redemption in their life. They are evil. These people are going to be taken away. And uh, I'll bring a message about that, but there was somebody that I won't name, but somebody who was extremely uh, rude to me, and uh, he just died. And uh, he was very young. Now, in the prophetic circle, they all think that he's wonderful. And I also think some people are able to present good, you know, good teaching and, you know, weird, kind of weird and interesting facts. And, and people follow that, and that's fine. But sometimes when you're a minister, you get to know what people are really like. And God really sees us the way we really are, not the way that people, you know, feel that we are. And I believe that... Um, you know, it, certainly God doesn't punish anyone for being rude to me. I think that's just an indication, an indication of what kind of person um, that minister was. And he had absolutely no grace. 
no grace, very uh, uh, unrecon irreconcilable is the word. And those people who think that they can be Christian and act irreconcilably will find themselves unreconciled with God. And I do have scripture, Mark chapter 11, verse 25, 26, if you will not forgive others, if you will not forgive others, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your sins. That's a big problem. It's not worth it. Not worth it for me, not worth it to trade eternity to be bitter, not worth it to trade my health in this lifetime to be bitter and angry. I don't even think about it. Let people do whatever they do. But I'm just saying, if revival's coming, this house cleansing is coming as well. Because the ministers can't just be good talkers. They have to be pure. And the Christians cannot be good talkers. They have to be pure. And pure is not what people think. Often people think, oh, they smoke, they drink, they're so impure, they're bad. We always look on the outside, but God looks on the inside. And people who have impure hearts, people who act with a spirit of Jezebel. You know, Jezebel attacked Elijah before he completed his ministry. Well, the spirit of Elijah is here again. It's the spirit of the end time. And those who attack the spirit of the end time, they're the Jezebels. Make sense? So there's a big warning for those who are acting under the influence of Jezebel. Repent. Repent now because I think uh, there's going to be a cleaning, a lot of deaths of the unrighteous this year. Okay? So I've said it. I said it last year. It happened. I say it again this year. Um, not trying to scare anybody. Trying to woo you to a good place in God. To repent and be in a safe place with God. Live in health. Yeah, live healthy on this earth, die and go to heaven. That's what my job is, to tell you, invite you, come to heaven. So thank God, um, before we can have a great America, you know, make America great again, as it is in the spiritual, so it is in the natural. Before we can make America great again, you have to drain the swamp. And that's what's going to happen in the body of Christ. God's going to drain the swamp and then... He's going to make church great again. He's going to make Christ's name great again. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here are some good scriptures to end. Isaiah 32, verse 1, Behold, a king will reign in righteousness and princes will rule with justice. That's what the end times is about. We're coming back to righteousness and justice. Jeremiah 23, verse 5, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. Well, the days are nearly here that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. And that's what we so long for. We don't want people who believe in abortion to say they're Christian. Hillary Clinton claims to be Christian, but yet she was for Roe v. Wade. Makes no sense. All right? If you want to catch up on Roe v. Wade, it's already posted for free on YouTube. Roe v. Wade. The truth about Roe v. Wade. One more. This is to encourage you to pray. At this time, don't be a critic. Don't be a judgmental spirit. Pray. Be a praying spirit. Proverbs 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when a wicked man rules, the people groan. So what we want to pray for is as many righteous people as possible to rule in Australia, in America, and around the world. That's our prayer. Amen? So I invite you to pray. I invite you to look up because Jesus is coming very, very soon. Get ready for him. Amen.